CMO in the business, Lanza, and they also are working with a very large pharmaceutical and the pandemic influenza facility, which is GSK, who is a well-known company. And so they have a lot of new ideas and new things that they're, they're bringing to it, but they do have pretty good backup based upon their collaborations with other companies. And you can see what they're trying to put together. But this is the, the National Center for Therapeutics Manufacturing. And it is a very well done warehouse that has basically movable clean rooms. Now the clean rooms themselves sit in the back of the facility and they have two hallways along the, the outer walls that, that provide the uh, entrance and excess. And this is what they look like. So you could actually put something into one of these manufacturing rooms, manufacture your phase one, and you know that's going to take a while for those results to get back. So you could pull that module out. It, this, this particular style floats on air bearings. You put about 90 PSI, it lifts up a little bitty off the ground and you just push it out of the way and put that in the, in the back of the, the facility and wait until the next project or the next piece of that project shows up. You move a new one in and that allows us to go in and, and, and work on something different. So you could do everything from uh, small scale or medium scale, I guess, depending upon the, the, the volumes that you're dealing with. Uh, biologics, therapeutics, you could put compressing machines and granulators in there. It's, it's a very flexible and they're, they're relatively strong units that manage that. The second, next one we do is Novartis. Now this, this facility we've been in cahoots with since 2006. And we've been working with them on a cell-based influenza vaccine that is now, well, I guess the first cell-based influenza vaccine approved in the U.S. And it's also approved in Europe and other countries, so it's, it's coming along as, as the first step. I, as Jeff was showing that, that set of eggs, and I thought he was going to say, do you know how to make vaccine out of these things? And I was really just heartbroken that he always didn't boil the damn things. Let's put some challenge in it. How do you inoculate it? How do you get it to grow? How do you make it go? Because that is nature's little incubator. That is the smallest incubator. That is the smallest fermenter. That's your cell base, avian cell base, but that is your cell based reactor sitting there. And when you try to handle 300,000 eggs a day, and make vaccines out of it. Listen, you want to talk about QBD and the difficulties <laughs> that go into that piece of biologics? It's a real joy. So it really is a step forward to, to put a lot, of, a lot of control around it by going to a cell-based system. Uh, cell-based systems provide a lot of the, the, the PAT that we've been talking about because you can instrument those reactors. You can, you can learn what's going on. Trying to instrument an egg has never been very successful. So we did that. Now, since we helped build the facility and do it, Novartis actually decided to put in a pilot plant. And they actually decided that before we went in for our CIADM. So the U.S. government actually got some extra money out of this, just, to, just on the side, in that we actually got access to their pilot plant. We're going to renovate it to make it a little more flexible. And they're going to make a, a big, bigger technical services building so they can put more people in and support it than they normally would. So this is truly how this partnership works. They're going to be responsible for occupancy of the pilot facility and occupying these people for half of the year, and we are responsible for the other half of the year. And if we can't come up with any projects, then we pay them to keep that staff online because we've learned it's all about the people. Facilities are nice. I won't say they're a dime a dozen, but there's still a lot of empty ones hanging around the world here. But the people to go in them are really much harder, and the quality people that understand all the rules we live by in that new regulation that now gets to be worked under are actually going to provide a lot of challenges, I think. Plus, I had to make an additional 50 million doses. Now, that facility was originally committed to do 150 million doses, so it is now committed in a pandemic to do 200 million doses. But we get to practice this. If anybody was paying attention to the news last winter, the Chinese managed to find a brand new avian influenza called H7N9. And it, at the time that we were looking at, had a, facility, a, a fatality rate of between 62 and 75 percent. So man, when you look at it and project it out, that's dying in the streets. So that's a lot of folks that could be adversely affected. So we wanted to get the jump on this one. Sometimes you see these and they don't really kick back out until later. So we actually went in and, and made some pilot lots of this to figure out exactly how it did and actually sent it all the way through the clinic so that we understood what the immune response was going to do. But we had something ready. We've actually partnered with um, 
the Vintner Institute, who does a lot of synthetic genomic work, and we actually had the, the, the sequence out of the Chinese within a day or two of them isolating the virus. We took that information, gave the sequence with us, CDC and Novartis, sent it to the Vintner Institute, who prepared the cassettes. The cassettes went to Novartis. Novartis made the seeds. The seeds went into the tanks, and ta-da. We actually had a, a product out the gate pretty quickly, months. And so that, that is kind of the view of how contagion works. So when it's kind of a known vaccine that, yeah, we can actually play the contagion game pretty good. When it's an influenza virus. If it was not influenza, I'm not so sure about this. The Novartis facility is a crossbred. It has some really big reactors because you, if anybody's been studying the disposal, once you get up about 2,000 liters, it just doesn't work real well in bags. And this goes up to 6,000 liter reactors. So it's a piece of steel, a lot of steel in there. And it's also a lot of disposables. So it's a real mix of, of, of the technology where we basically applied whichever technology was appropriate for the scale and the process we were looking for. The next company we went to was Emergent, or the last I should say, is Emergent Biosolutions. Now, they're a company that's been in this, this space of providing strange and exotic disease, and by they're the only manufacturer of anthrax vaccine right now. So they've been around a while in this space of unique products. And they had acquired a facility in Baltimore that had another lifetime, and they started retrofitting it. And then we came out with this proposal, and they said, what a deal, the government can help us do this. Well, we didn't come out quite fast enough. They ended up retrofitting their two, two uh, existing spaces. And now we're going to have to make a third space, but they actually needed it to be able to make. Remember, I said it had to make 50 million doses of flu. That's a lot of flu, guys. 50 million doses, a lot of flu. So they're actually going to have to scale up. They are actually manufacturing clinical material in areas one and two already. Uh, they had a TB, I guess this is public knowledge, they had a TB vaccine that that wasn't very successful that they had taken all the way in that facility from start to back. So they, they, they had actually done quite well of my, changing that facility and it's completely disposable. It has all the standard aspects of a biotech facility with utilities and mortar and steam, everything else, but pretty much everything in there was disposable. It, the only thing they'd have to put in if they needed to would be centrifuges. But they, they've uh, managed to get that along uh, their partner for uh, doing pandemic influenza is a company that's in phase one trial. So we, we actually do the very beginning stuff too. And that's the company's name, Vaccinate. So they are bringing their skills as a company and they're actually helping a small company through as part of our thing. Now we, at, we also have a, uh, a contract with Vaccinate where we're providing money for their development. So we're working with them on all that. This is their existing facility that they've done. This is what we'd be using for our product development when we have our task orders that are out there and start doing the development activity. They have pretty much finished that. So that's been pretty available. Some ideas they have up to, I believe this is a thousand liter. I don't have accelerate. It's an accelerex, I believe in there. So they have that and they've demonstrated that it works pretty good for process development and other people have. And they've got a good staff and a nice facility. So, I mean, we're happy on, on what we've got in our, in our portfolio to be able to meet what, what's going to go on in these strange and exotic diseases that are coming out. So I, I do like the aspect that the whole time we've been doing this since I was giving, given policy by a place on Pennsylvania Avenue, we have nimble manufacturing facilities. So how many people have worked in a licensed facility in their life? And how many people would view licensed facilities as nimble? And, it, and if you say yeah, then you've never lived under change control. But trying to explain change control to a bureaucrat, you know, it's just, it, it, it is un, not understandable in their lexicon. So you just, you just don't do it. You build what you can. And so we've got facilities that within the context of our business are about as nimble as you can make it. And just as an aside, one of my other favorite one is, what is a platform? Can anybody give me a definition of platform? Yell it out. It's a piece of stainless steel, usually diamond plate that you walk on. That is a platform. Now you have technologies that you can use from one piece to another. And I've made like 15 vaccines. So I've actually reused three technologies. So it is possible, but that's, it's a technology. A platform is a little bit different. I, you know, I think we get confused sometimes. 
But we also are beginning to branch out. Uh, Jeff mentioned the antibiotics and the and we're antivirals both. We're very heavy into that. And we actually have programs for looking at MRSA and doing other things and actually special relationships with several of the, the companies. So that's what, that's what I'm doing with facilities that make the bulk substance. So then you got to put it in something. So during the pandemic, the second thing we learned was, guess what? The filling of vaccines in the major companies is not 100 percent elastic. And if you know anything about flu ma vaccine manufacturing, hope oh, did I skip one? Yeah, there we go. The manufacture of that facility and how fast that goes sometimes is really uh, it's hard because everything is reagent dependent. So you build up a real backlog of a bulk substance, and then all of a sudden you get your reagents. And just as an aside, every vaccine lot is sent to the government for release. That's what the rule is. So if you haven't ever played that rule, let me tell you, add four months on every release cycle when you send that in. Now, during the pandemic, the FDA did a fantastic job in marshalling people, so we got that turnaround time, and that is just as it was coming off its sterile release test coming out of the filling platform, we were actually getting FDA release. So it is something that under emergency can be done, but vaccines are a different beast than, than you have in other places. So when Jeff said, oh yeah, we ask for samples all the time, I'm saying, huh? I give samples all the time. It's, it's not voluntary. You send your production documents, you send everything. Hey, every lot gets to go there. So we discovered that, that actually fill finish was a big deal. And the fill finish is, is, is something we decided to, to bulk up on that one. So we brought in fill finish facilities that'll, that'll help us in that surge time as we get the release of, of products and we, we can get stuff out the gate. Because in a vaccine, you know, you, you get your first shot and if it's a two shot regime, you're not, you're not protected until you get that second shot and you're about a week afterwards. Even with a one shot regime, you still got at least seven or eight days for your immune response to work. So you gotta get ahead of the pandemic and the spread of the disease to really be effective for a response. And so we recognize that, you know, we've got that surge, we gotta get it out. We think we can actually get out more product than they can deliver to the marketplace. And that's, you know, it's, to beat that side of logistics is great. You can see the companies that are doing it. We have Cook, JHP, DSM, and Nanotherapeutics, which is a front company for Baxter. So we got major players on doing this. We got people that are experienced in manufacturing and they're aligned with the accepted licensed manufacturers of influenza vaccines. So the other side of this is a lot of companies we've discovered when you go into them and you want that CIADM side of it where you want to do fill finish, usually that's the one piece of their facilities that is at 98% capacity. There is not a single full-blown manufacturer, the big five, I think, that has very much excess filling capacity ever. So. In this particular case, when you got these little guys in competing, we now have a little more control on how that's done and, and can set up the direct relationship. So we're, we're working in that, that side of, of getting some excellence in our filling and, and, and make sure we get it right. Because the government is unique in its aspect in that when you do these products that are basically going to be stored in case bad things happen, Unlike the standard business cycle is, ah, you put a two or three year dating on it and you sell it all, you run your capacity so you're constantly mixing. I'm putting stuff in a warehouse that you're going to hold for a long time. So our look at it a lot of time is what, does the, what formulation do you give that one works and two that can, can cause the pro protein to be stable for a very, 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 very long time? Or can you lifealize it? Can you do something like that? Because remember, it is our money, your money, because I'm spending all of it as the government, that I put this stuff in. And you know, it's not, you don't want to make it like a gallon of milk every three weeks. You've got to take it, throw it away, and buy a new one. It's, that's not very profitable to us, because we know we don't use it until there's, there's an actual event, which we don't want to have happen. So it's an insurance. So nobody likes to pay insurance until you have your car wrecked. But you know, on that side, it, it's kind of that way. And so you want to get the best price. So we try to make what we do look like the Geico of the uh, pharmaceutical business where we buy stuff and it's cheap and it lasts a long, long time. So that's what your government's doing to you to protect you from strange and insidious diseases. Are there any questions? <laughs> and since no